Hi guys, Matthew Woodward here and welcome to my SEO Moz review and tutorial. Today you're going to learn how to set up SEO Moz properly and get a full tour of the back end over my shoulder as I work to improve my own blog. You're going to learn how to use the various tools to improve the rankings of your websites, how to automatically identify SEO problems and fix them easily, how to monitor a range of factors including links social signals and rankings in multiple search engines and how to build schedule and automate awesome reports so this is what the SEO Moz website looks like if you've not seen it before and it is a collection of SEO and social media tools it's all web based so you don't need to run or install any software and there's a completely free fully functional 30-day trial available so just click on the big yellow button to start your free trial and enter in your details and once I've done that I will resume the video. So once you signed up to the trial you can build your first campaign and if you enter your website URL here and a name for the campaign and up here you've got a couple of different options now subdomain will track purely www.matthewwoodward.co.uk but if I had a subdomain I don't know perhaps blog.matthewwoodward.co.uk I would want to choose root domain which would track all of the main domains and any subdomains but I just want to track www.matthewwoodward.co.uk which is what most people will want to do so I can continue to next step and we can select our target search engines now in Google Analytics I know that most of my traffic comes from Google United States and Google UK that makes up for about 85 percent of my traffic check your Google Analytics to see which ones you should be tracking continue now you can choose to track your competitors now I'm not going to track any but if you're an e-commerce site perhaps you might want to see how your competitors are performing against you you can add them here you can also connect your account to Google Analytics which pulls in more data and uh, provides much more actionable reports I recommend you do this so I'm just going to pause the video while I do that okay I have now done that continue and now it allows you to add in a bunch of keywords um, as well as brand keywords so you want to have a look in analytics and see what keywords are currently driving your top traffic and also define any brand keywords that people might be using to search for you so one moment while I do that okay so I've added some keywords in here now you can add more you can actually track up to 300 keywords this is just to get you going and I've defined my brand keywords as my URL my last name and part of my first name because some people spell it like that some people with Matthew and so on so let's hit create my campaign oh also SEO Moz review um, I don't have a page for that yet I'm making the tutorial right now so it'll be interesting to see how that performs uh, over time so create my campaign that will kick off the first crawl for your site it can take a couple of days to complete um, in the meantime you can see some other aspects of your campaign but really you need to wait for um, the, first cam uh, the first run of the starter crawl to complete and you'll get an email uh, when that's ready. So I will resume the tutorial when that's done. So after the first scrape is complete, this is what the dashboard will look like. And here you can see the campaign we added before and you can actually add up to five campaigns here. But let's just drill down into the campaign we set up earlier a minute. Now this brings us to the campaign overview screen and we'll come back to this. There's something you need to do quickly. If you come to the social area here, you need to add your Twitter and Facebook accounts because it takes a while for it to pull in that data. Um, I added my accounts here a few days ago and, and even still it's not pulled in all of the data just yet. So 
come over and add your accounts here as soon as possible. Um, when you come onto this tab for the first time, it takes you through it step by step. It's really easy to do. So let's shoot back to the overview of the campaign quickly here. Now, here are all of the different um, tools that you have got within your campaign and sometimes there are sub menus and other options. But let's just take a look at the overview quickly. Now, it has pulled in um, my data from Google Analytics here. We can see the organic search visits have uh, increased by 14% week on week which is um, pretty good. And we can also see that my branded keywords, which are the ones that include my name, have increased 31% week on week, whereas actually the non-branded keywords only increase 13%. So this shows me that my brand recognition is increasing quicker than um, the, the, the keyword growth for general terms, which is a, a good thing. Coming down, we can see Crawl Diagnostics. Now this goes through your entire site and uh, checks it for a range of issues. As you can see here, um, I've been a bit of a naughty boy, missing meta description tag. I can take a guess that that's gonna be forum topics uh, because I tried to integrate them but couldn't. Um, Keyword rankings here. Now we only tracked uh, five keywords in the initial setup. We can add more and I'm going to show you how to do that. And you can see here it um, also tracks the ranking changes as well as traffic from the keywords that you're tracking in your campaign. And competitive link analysis. This allows you to compare your link profile with your competitors directly. Now, I didn't add any competitors, but later on in this tutorial, I'm going to add a few to see how I stack up against some of the authorities in uh, this niche and uh, some of the people I've been following for many years. So that is the campaign overview. And let's take a look first at adding keywords to our campaign uh, so we can begin tracking all of those and, and which keywords that you should add as well. Adding keywords to track is quite easy. Just come up to manage keywords and here you can just add the keywords you want to track in this box. Click add keywords and it will begin to track them and you can track up to 300 in total. Now finding which keywords you want to track, SEO Moz actually make this pretty easy for us. You can come to the find new keywords tab and this shows us the top 200 keywords currently sending you traffic. Uh, from Google Analytics and you can see how many visits you've had in the last week and the last four weeks and where you currently rank for those keywords. You can also filter for branded keywords like this or non-branded keywords like this. And you can even analyze the keyword further to determine how difficult it, it is and, and what you could do to improve your rank. Um, so the last time it checked the uh, rankings for SE New CR review, I was rank number three. And if we click here, we can do a deeper analysis and we can see how difficult uh, the keyword is. Um, as, as well as some uh, various signals here that um, uh, uh, look at how authoritative each site is in the top 10. Now you can actually see since it updated the ranks I have moved into the number one position for SE Nuke XCR review and just take a look at that. Have a look, have a look at how, how my page authority and domain authority stacks up against the rest. It's no way near the strongest but uh, it's not all about the links. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, so you can see here how easy it is to get a quick overview for keywords. You can also run more detailed reports if you want to look into it further. Um, and if we just come back to the keyword bit, we can see um, a tick box here. And if you wanted to add that, you can click on Add Keyword. So you can just work through this list, add in the keywords that you want to track. But you can also look in Google Analytics yourself for some uh, additional keywords you might want to track. So if you're in Analytics, you can just hit Traffic Sources. 
search engine optimization and queries. Now this interface is what used to be available via Google Webmaster Tools, but it's now available directly in Analytics. It's always kind of a day or two behind, but it does um, let you see a lot of data um, about keywords that you're not currently seeing. The problem is if you actually come to Sources, Search, Organic, and look at the keywords here, we're getting a lot of this not provided data, which is uh, when people are searching with secure search enabled, which is enabled by default now, which is a problem because we don't know much about all of these visits and in, in this information. But when you look at search engine optimization and queries, you see, you can see here that, that the, the terms, the popular terms are, are different and we can also see what sort of impressions we're getting and uh, what your average position is. So, you know, just, just Ahrefs on its own, I'm getting an average position of 4.4. That's probably a keyword worth tracking. Um, it's had a lot of impressions. We've got 35,000 impressions on that keyword um, in the last month. So, have a look through here and see if there are any keywords that you would like to add and track that aren't available um, directly through the SEO Moz interface. So I'm going to just compile my list of keywords now and add them to the keyword tracker. So I've added a total of 48 keywords to my campaign and you can see some of them down here. Um, I didn't go overboard, just some of the ones that uh, I'd like to keep an eye on. And after doing that, if you come across to campaign settings, here you can uh, change a few things up and you can also add um, tracking from other search engines here and countries if you want to, as well as select which is the main one you want to track. Um, don't forget to add your Google Analytics profile and you can also add your competitors down here which I'm going to do now and let's see how I stack up against some of the uh, people I've been following for many years so let's see shoe money the obvious one um, let's have a see have a crack with John Chow see what he can do uh, and Zach Johnson as well he's a pretty cool dude and save settings Now, the rankings only update weekly. Uh, this is uh, a good thing. I know a lot of people like to track rankings daily, but there's that much fluctuation and looking at things daily rarely gives you any actionable data. It, it just makes things harder and more confusing for you. Now, for the keywords I've just added in, uh, it's not going to go and fetch that data for us just yet, but for the original five keywords, we can see how we are performing here, as well as any traffic increases that those keywords have uh, brought to us. So this report will be much more handy once it's gone out and pulled that data in for us. You can also do um, additional research on the keywords and you know look at history and ranking anal analysis and things like that. Uh, oh, as well as you can actually export these reports um, into a variety of different formats, but I'm going to exp explore the reports with you in much more detail because this is actually a really, really powerful part of SEO Moz. Um, so while it's going to pull in all of those rankings, let's take a look at the crawl diagnostics. Now, the crawl diagnostic summary is actually somewhere you should spend a lot of time. As you can see here, I've got quite a lot of errors and warnings for the site that I uh, obviously need to go through and fix. And you can see a breakdown of all of these errors and warnings uh, as you scroll further down. And if you want to um, dig into anything, um, further you can just click on it so title element too long we can click on that there and this graph will actually progress over time and show you so if you go and fix all of these now the next time it crawls you should see this uh, graph become a, a downward trend and you can see all of the URLs here um, how many characters they are how much they're over by and you can work through and fix those for example 
you can quickly navigate between the different errors here. Now, one of the ones that I had is a big problem was missing meta description tag. That was by far the biggest problem. Uh, like 600 and odd pages that don't have the meta description tag set. And we can quickly see here, okay, none of my category pages have a meta description. That's pretty naughty. Uh, the contact me page, you know, that's pretty basic error for me not to have that there. Um, the forums, now the BB Press plugin itself doesn't actually generate the meta descriptions, but look at how many different forum topics there are here that, that don't have the meta description. So we need to fix that, no doubt about it. Now, I have found the quickest way to work through the crawl diagnostic summary is to export it to a CSV, which produces a spreadsheet that looks like this. And then if you just come up to data, filter, this adds a quick filter to everywhere. So this lists all of the different URLs and the errors that they have, and you can just work through these. So um if we find the missing meta description tag we can just change this to true and this then just filters out all the urls that have that problem and once you've fixed all of them you can select all move move on to the next error um so duplicate page content we can click on true and it will tell us the URL that it believes has the duplicate page content over here. So it makes it very easy to work through all the errors when you export it as this CSV. So let's quickly take a look at how we can very, very quickly fix a lot of these errors. So let's take a look at fixing some of these issues quickly. Missing meta description tag is uh, one of the main offenders and it was mostly forum topics, replies and category pages that contributed to that. And if we look at the uh, source code here of a forum post, it even says for us here, admin only notice this page doesn't show a meta description because it doesn't have one. Write one, for, write one specifically or set up a template. So. I am using the Yoast WordPress SEO plugin. And if you come to SEO, title and metas here, and come to post types, you can actually define the meta description templates for the various aspects, including forums and topics and replies if you have BB Press installed. Now, the reason my forum doesn't have meta descriptions is uh, when I first set it up, it didn't. I wasn't using this plugin and I tried to code it in and, and, and hack the meta descriptions, but it just broke everything and uh, eventually I gave up. Um, but since using this plugin, I've obviously not thought about that and it's actually just very easy to fix hundreds of errors here. You can also set up meta description templates for your category pages and tag pages. So let's take a look at doing that. First of all, if you come to the help tab, there's a number of placeholders that you can use to make sure that each meta description is unique. And the one I'm going to use to fix the forums is this excerpt tag. And that will replace, um, well, will auto generate a meta tag for you. So if we come to post types here and find all the ones to do with forums, it's that one, that one, that one, and this one and this one and hit save settings and if we come across to our source code here and refresh it there we go we can now see the meta description is present so all of the missing meta descriptions for forums is now fixed, which is probably like 500, maybe 550 or so of the errors. And we just need to do the same for our category pages. So I quite like that we could just insert a excerpt here that will auto generate as well. Um, not perfect. You should probably go in and actually, if you come into posts and categories, 
you can actually set up um, a description for each category here and use that as a meta description that's a, that's the, the best way to do it but if you're short on time you can just add the excerpt into there so you know if you do see a lot of errors when you first log in don't be worried that's you know they, they are quite easy to fix title element too long let's take a look at what's causing that see how quickly we can fix that okay so it's tagging my name onto the end which is like 17 or 18 characters and you can see a lot of these are um, under that kind of level so we can fix a lot of these errors by actually removing my name from the end of the title and that is done if you come to post types you can see here this site name placeholder that's getting uh, tagged onto the end of everything in fact you can remove all of that and just have the title which I actually set uh, for posts and pages and that should remove um, a lot of the title length issues and that's again just save settings and a lot of those are fixed so let's move on to the next part of SEO Moz. The on-page optimization tool will provide uh, optimization advice for all of the keywords that you track. Now, um, these get updated weekly and because I've only just added a lot of keywords, there's only uh, three reports available right now. Uh, but next week they'll be available for every keyword. And if you click into them down here, you can see um, all of the different uh, points that it checks for here and it doesn't think I've used keywords appropriately and it tells you why it doesn't and what the recommendation is um, and it does this for all of the various points here that you can see you can also export these reports as PDF but if you want an on-page report available right now that hasn't been generated yet what you can do is select any of your tracked keywords here import any URL that you want there and click grade my on-page optimization and that will go out and uh, fetch a fresh report for you. Moving on to the link analysis section, remember before we added my competitors as Shoe Money, John Chow and Zach Johnson just to see how I stack up against uh, some of the people I've been reading for a number of years and as you can see uh, yeah I'm pretty far behind in the metrics here. Um, don't even win one of them not even close <laughs> so um, if you want to learn a bit more about these metrics you can mouse over and click on learn more you can also delve down and see which are the most powerful links for each of your competitors you can see John Chow's got a lot of Technorati links as has Zach Johnson so perhaps I need to get some links from there Shoe Money oh he's also got Technorati links that I don't um, and SEO oh I'd lo love a link from the SEO book glossary uh, maybe one day I'll learn one um, you can also drill down and look at the, the top pages that get, are getting links as well as the anchor text phrases user most. Uh, you can see the, the trend here is our name or domain name between all of us. So it's interesting to see that that has happened um, in line with my competitors and that's what I should be expecting to see. And you can also uh, drill down into backlinks even further. Um, let's have a nosy at some of John Chow's. See more in Open Site Explorer. So here you can actually look at all of the inbound links that SEO Moz has found. Uh, just for reference, so Ahrefs will find a lot more links than Open Site Explorer does, but this gives you a nice indication. You can download it all as a CSV. You can really drill down into the anchor text and everything like that, and and what's really driving things. You can compare link metrics with any other URLs that you want, and there's some advanced reports here. And um, you know, Open Site Explorer is is an entire tool in itself. Which which you get with SEO Moz and 
you've they've just launched this just discovered links um to try and as, as they find new links they're, they're trying to get them into the database as quickly as possible whereas previously the the database updates were done in batches they're trying to get this to be nearly real time uh, which will be really really impressive if they manage to do that so you can see that drilling down through all of the links here the actual link analysis gives you lots of actionable data and reveals your competitors strongest link sources that you can uh, go and steal so that's a nice nice feature to have the organic traffic data, all of this is pulled in from Google Analytics and provides a nice overview of how many organic visits you've had um, and the changes which were on the overview screen before. And you get some nice little graphs here so you can see how organic search visits have changed week on week. As you can see, I've seen a little bit of a spike here after a little bit of a decline. And uh, it's also broken down by search engine here, pages per visit, average time. So you can actually see, interestingly, Bing might have only produced 11 visits, but those visits actually clicked through considerably more pages than a Google visitor and spent more time on the site and had a much less bounce rate. Um, that's an interesting set of statistics there. Um, similar, Yahoo traffic visited a lot more pages and had a much lower bounce rate than Google. Interesting. Anyway, you can also take a look at URLs receiving entrances via search. So which are the most popular URLs people are landing on when they search? And you can see here, um, interesting, I only published that post a few days ago. And already it is one of the most popular URLs getting traffic from search. And you can also look at the various keywords that are driving that and you can see a lot of my keywords are branded with my name so although you would probably use analytics to drill down into this data in much more detail it does provide a really nice overview and you can flick it to a monthly view here to see month on month changes and well that's a, a much better looking growth isn't it month on month the social dashboard also provides you with some pretty actionable data. Um, as you can see here, it's still pulling in the data and this will work much better when it has data from a certain time period. So it can actually track how many new Facebook and Twitter interactions you've had in the last 30 days. Um, but it's not actually pulled that data in for my account yet. Unfortunately, there's no Google Plus tracking, which it's kind of weird because the SEO Moz team have done all sorts of coverage on why Google Plus is so important, but they're not currently providing it in the dashboard. I do believe they're going to start providing it um, in the next couple of months, um, but that is a, a, a lacking feature at the moment. So hopefully that will come to us very soon. They do add new features and tools uh, all the time. If you come and have a look here, you can see an example report um, of social activity and things once it's pulled it in, um, as well as your your likes growth and your retweets growth and everything like that. You can drill down into further reports using the sub menu here. So if we jump into the Twitter reports, we can see a little bit more data. Like uh, we've got some follower growth here, so. Uh, 942 jumped up to 952 and there's various different graphs here that you can get in additional metrics and exactly the same kind of reports are available for Facebook which looks something like this but obviously this will be much more useful once you've got a bit of historic data in here and you can see the growths and how that has affected um, traffic and everything like that for your site directly. So the last thing we need to cover is the reports section for your campaign and this is really powerful stuff. First of all you need to add a new report and you get a number of choices here such as a title, a description, do you want it weekly, monthly or quarterly and who to email the report to when it's ready. 
and you can completely customize exactly what is included in your report. So, for example, you might build a report for a client that shows them their ranking summary, improvements and declines. And you can view examples of all of these here and, and what that actually will produce in the report. And there's a rankings, improvements and declines. So providing a top level summary is really easy. You tick what you want to include. You can give it a title and a description and choose which search engine it pulls the data from. Now the default descriptions are pretty cool here. It allows you to provide a quite a professional and informative report really easily just pretty much by ticking the boxes and using the default options here. And you can see there's all sorts of different uh, metrics. So the highest ranked keywords, you can provide this graph and show them which keywords are ranking highest. Um, and you might also include traffic in a report that you were sending to a client. But to a developer, for example, you might choose to um, just send all of the crawl diagnostics and create a crawl diagnostics report that only gets sent to members of the technical team. So they are constantly informed of any issues that they need to fix. And you can see here all of these different types of um, reports that you or different sections that you can include in final reports creating that report scheduling it out to send to whoever um, whenever you want this makes it really easy to keep in you know keep clients up to date with what's going on keep people up to date with changes that need to be made and so forth it's one of the most powerful reporting tools I have come across so that's all of the different features and functions of the campaign section of SEO Moz, and you can add campaigns for up to five websites in total but they also have a bunch of other handy tools now we've already touched on open site explorer and you can um, use this to uh, get the backlinks for any comp Repeating URL that you want, just paste the URL in there, hit search, and it will retrieve all of the backlinks pointing to it. You also have free access to Follower Wonk Twitter Analytics. Um, this is actually a pretty cool tool. Um, let's just jump into it quickly and I will show you what it does. So you can get a, an, an analysis on people's followers, and if I enter mine in here it will just quickly go and fetch all of this data so I can see that most of my followers reside in the UK and on the east coast of the United States states the social authority of the people that are following me and I have lots of people with not much authority and just a couple of people with a decent uh, amount of authority we can also see uh, genders follow accounts of my followers um, following counts and account ages, recencies of tweets, total tweets, all sorts of different statistics and you can get this, um, oh yes this is really cool as well, the most active hours for my followers so I can see at what time throughout the day that my follower base is the most active so I know when I will get the most reaction from my tweets. And there are a bunch of other little tools um, available throughout Follower Wonk, but this is the one that I really um, quite liked having a look through. We've also got the newly released Fresh Web Mentions tool, and this is an extension of Open Site Explorer's um, new sort of real-time attempt at adding links to the database. So if I enter my URL here, let's see where I have been mentioned recently. And let's have a look across the last four weeks. And we can see a few places I've been mentioned and I can jump in here and react to those people. Um, for example, they've made a forum post here. Oh, looking for an SEO tutorial thread containing two hour long video tutorials. Well, I know that they are looking specifically for my tutorial, so I could jump into that thread and point them in the right direction. Um, now this is in beta, it's not returned that many results really, uh, BuzzBundle would 
do a lot better for, for, for monitoring the web for terms. Um, so I'm sure they'll make a lot of improvements to this tool over time. It has only just been released as a beta, so bear that in mind. And then we just have some of the other tools that we've already looked at. They have a SEO toolbar that you can install in your web browser, a web crawler to crawl any URL that you want and check for errors and issues quickly. And you also have access to the Q&A forum where there's loads of people uh, talking about various problems and it's uh, some, some fairly knowledgeable people in the forum here and the community the UMOS user blog, there's various events, and the Learn SEO section um, is quite um, detailed. There's a huge amount of resources here to help you. Perfect, really, for anyone that's new and just getting into SEO. You can also read the Beginner's Guide to SEO. Now, you don't need to be an SEO uh, member for this, but it's a really nice guide of the basics of SEO um, and how everything fits together. And as you can see, it's really nicely laid out and easy to uh, follow and understand. So if you are new to SEO, be sure to check that out. So that pretty much wraps up my SEO Moz review. Um, I hope you've seen how handy it can be. And it is uh, makes a lot of the reporting and tracking of issues quite easy to deal with. Uh, for all of your campaigns. Don't forget there is a completely free fully functional 30-day trial available So make sure you sign up to that and add your site and see how it performs for you